I want to welcome you to North Shore Church of Christ. We're at 326 Julian Street in the great city of Waukegan, Illinois. And we appreciate your connecting with us electronically or live as we attempt to do what the Lord would have us to do. There is no book that is greater than the Biblos called the Bible. Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. My, my word will stand the test of time. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. There are many that are preaching the word. They claim to preach the word. They mix a little bit of truth with a bit of error. And it sounds good, it feels good, but you need to preach the entire truth. I believe one writer says, if you preach the word of God, if you're offended in one point, you're guilty of all of it. We attempt every bit to try to preach where the Bible, speak where the Bible speak, and be silent where the Bible is silent. Many of you have had many challenges in life recently. Death has hit your families. Uh, we must be aware of the fact that death is going to come. All of us that are here right now, we're going to die. We're going to pass away. It's just a temporary thing that we are here on the face of this earth. Every day that I live and every moment that I breathe, I appreciate the Lord for giving me that opportunity. I ask you to pray for my beloved wife. She wasn't feeling well this morning, and we pray that everything will be all right <clears throat> and that when I get home, she will, might have a little dinner ready uh, for me because she's supposed to cook when she's sick as well as when she is well. Now, don't you all tell her what I said. Now, I, I don't you tell her uh, what I said uh, because uh, I, I know she won't be looking at YouTube to see what I have uh, said. You know, I see Brother Marvin McBride smiling over there. Uh, you know, that's the part of my training course for her. But I love her very much, and uh, y'all just pray for her. Uh, let us pray for all of those that are sick among us. Uh, there's a lot of them that are sick. Let us pray for those that are traveling, too, that things will be well with all of them. Uh, coming up this year, uh, pretty soon, it'll be a little while yet, we have the National Teachers Workshop coming up. Also, we have the celebrated seniors coming up in this area. And the Midwest Youth Conference will be coming up this year. And uh, later on in the year, we will be having, uh, we'll have a fall meeting this year uh, out in September, uh, or the third Sunday in September. I just set that aside on the calendar in a preacher's meeting on yesterday uh, for this area for us. And uh, what all the other things we got going on, uh, so let's just govern yourselves accordingly. There's a lot of things going on in the area and then things we'll be, we'll be doing as a, as a congregation. Remember that Christianity is not a spectator uh, uh, event. It's not a spectator event. It is a participating event. And there are times that uh, uh, we become discouraged and disoriented and uh, affected by, you know, uh, whatever it might be. But you must remember you're working for Jesus. Jesus doesn't get tired. He lets your heart continue to beat. He keeps your appetite rolling, and he keeps you able to do the things that you're doing. As a matter of fact, on today, we got just a little bit of snow. We didn't get too much, so you can go. I like that. Just a little bit of snow, but not too much, so you can go. All right? That's, that's good. He sent all the heavy-duty snow somewhere else. So, so we're, we're blessed there. It's kind of nice outside. Actually, it's not that cold outside. Uh, well, don't, don't, you know, don't, 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 you know, don't put on your uh, bathing suit or something, but it's not that cold. <laughs> and uh, it's so it's good to be, be, be here and worship the Lord. I want you to enjoy yourself for a moment. Turn your cell phones off uh, <clears throat> unless you're talking to Jesus. And uh, open your Bibles up for just a moment. And uh, let's see if we can uh, uh, inform not only the live audience, but also the virtual audience, something about Christianity. Now, we talk about being, I, I, I always state that I'm a New Testament Christian, but I, I don't spend enough time telling you how to become a New Testament Christian. 
Uh, it's one thing to be one. It's another thing to know how to become one. Uh, and uh, now all of us sitting here, if, if you are a Christian, you ought to know how you became one. But do you know what you did when you did do that? You know, sometimes we do things we don't know what we did, why we did it, but we did it because it was good to do. So learn to do what, so you want to know what you did in order to get where you are. Okay. If you have a copy of God's Word, let us open up with Acts chapter 3. If you have your Bible, the third chapter of Acts. Now, have you all heard of the book of Acts? Okay, the book of Acts is called Acts of the Apostle. Uh, and that means what it says. It's activities of the apostles. Activities of the apostles. I'm going to give you, in, in about 30 minutes, I'm going to give you a, a synopsis of the book of Acts. I don't want to be too long because I know you're in a hurry to go home and watch the NFL. Uh, that's the National Foods League, isn't it? Okay, but anyway, you want you you you, you whatever it is, whatever it is you want to do this afternoon, uh, but uh, we 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 need to get serious uh, about higher level things, about spiritual. Quit, quit playing church and get serious about church. You can't be wandering here and there and not know what's going on and you know, cavalier. You got to get serious about church. And because uh, cause one of these days the Lord's going to take you out of here. Uh, you know, we, we, we do all these funerals and services and so forth. One day it's going to be your funeral. And then one day it's going to be my funeral. And then when you all walk by, my beer, my casket, I might just sit up and say, didn't I tell you I was going to be here? And then lay back down. Lord, have mercy. So you just just never know what yeah, you got to enjoy this. I'm, I'm looking at my son over there. He doesn't, he, he, can't, he can't handle that kind of conversation. Ah, but that's all right. That's all right. You got to enjoy it while you're here because pretty soon it'll be gone. In Acts chapter 3 and verse 19, <clears throat> I'm going to set sail with verse number 19 where uh, the apostle uh, Peter is uh, in control and he says repent ye therefore and be what? Be converted. Now what I want to do is tell you how to be converted now. He said repent and be converted. He said that your sins may be blotted out. Alright see that's, that's the way you get rid of your sins. You got to be converted. Alright now uh, let, 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 let's, now that's what Peter said there in verse number 19. Now, 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 let, let me define conversion converted for you. Go back to chapter 3, I mean chapter 2. If you go back to chapter 2, all right, I'm going to show you how to, see, the, 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 we've got to learn how to rightly divide the Bible. Uh, sometimes you need parallel scriptures, all right? So chapter 3, he said, you know, repent and be converted, all right? In chapter 2, in verse 38, Peter said, what did he say? He said, repent, then said, Peter said unto them, repent and what? And be baptized. All right. So in that he said, repent and be baptized. And then in chapter 3 he says, repent and be converted. So right out of that you know what converted is, right? Converted is to be baptized. A lot of times people say, well, I've been converted, but I don't have to be baptized. Well, you know, you know now you get around that one, you're a good person. Now you, you can't get around that. So now the question is, how are we to be converted? Well, we got to be baptized, all right? Now, what is the book of Acts all about? It's about the Acts of the Apostles. What's an apostle? Well, an apostle, first of all, the Acts of the Apostles, the apostles were preachers. They were preachers that the Lord had chosen to carry on the work when he went back to heaven. They were special preachers because, first of all, they didn't have time to go to Southwestern Christian College. They didn't have time to sit down and learn the Bible, etc. Et what, what the Lord did is he educated them instantaneously by a baptismal measure of the Holy Spirit. So the apostles, the, only the apostles, only the apostles now, only the apostles received a baptismal measure of the Holy Spirit. Not the 120, just the apostles. All right, if you believe that in Acts chapter 2, right quick in Acts chapter 2, 
very quickly, you notice something here uh, in, in Acts chapter 2, I believe so, somewhere, if I can find it here in just a minute, uh, in, the, in the second chapter of Acts, and I, I think it's about verse number 14. <clears throat> All right, notice what it said. But Peter, standing up with what? The eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. All right, so that's, this is after they had received the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. Who got it? Peter and the eleven. What's eleven plus one? That's twelve. All right, nobody else got it. Now there might be some who claim they're apostles. Today. See, people can say what they want to say. There's a man sitting out of our Congress right now said that he's a Jew, but he's not a Jew. He said he has a degree, but he doesn't have a degree. He says he's a million, a multimillionaire, but he's not a multimillionaire. He got $700,000 from someone. People can say what they want to say. Just because they say it does not make it legitimate, all right? I don't say that I'm a New Testament Christian. I'm going to show you how that I am a New Testament Christian by the Word of God. All right? That's the only way I can do this thing. Now, conversion, conversion. Now, first of all, I got to deal with conversion. All right? There, there's a three-step process to conversion. Three changes you got to make to be converted. One is you got to change your heart. But first of all, you got to know what the heart is. Some people say, I got Jesus in my heart. No, you don't want him down here. Uh-uh, no, 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 no. That thing just pumped blood. You don't want him down here. You want him up here in this noggin, this noggin up here called the brain in your control system. Your brain. Solomon said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So wherever you do your thinking, that's the heart. That's where you, you got to change up here. All right? Now, there are a lot of ways that this up here can be changed. It can be changed by your eyeballs, what you see. But let me tell you something. What you see can play tricks on you. Lord have mercy. That's just like a lot. One guy, he, he got these bitcoins. Now, he's all excited about bitcoins. I said, all right. I said, but tell you one thing. When you come to visit us at church, don't put no bitcoins in the offering tray. You keep your bitcoins and give me, put George Washington in the, in the, in the tray. Uh, give, give me George Washington. You can keep your bitcoins. And now, now there may be a time where, we, where bitcoin will be the thing. Now, if you all want to get into that, you can get all excited about that. But change the heart. Number one. Remember that? That, that, that's, that's part of conversion. And that, that's part of obeying Jesus. Change the heart. Just hold that thought. Number two, change the behavior. All of us, we have had some bad behavior. All of us still got some bad behavior. And all of us are going to do some bad behavior things. Amen? So you got to change your behavior. Number two. And then number three, you got to change your relationship. Relationships has messed a lot of us up. In fact, it's messed all of us up. Along the way, we've had some bad relationships that got us into some trouble. Amen. You wouldn't have done it had you not been with the people that you were with. But they enticed you. And because of peer pressure, you got caught up in that particular relationship. So you got to change your relationship. Everybody got that? All right, now let's go back and repeat that again. Now, relative to the heart, how do I change the heart? Well, number one, I need to have faith in Christ. Faith is not a sitting on the seat kind of faith. Faith without works is dead. So how do I get faith? Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the faith that I'm talking about is the one faith you only get that by the word of God. You don't get it by feeling. You don't get it by giving money to the poor. You don't get it by visiting the sick. You don't get it by not cursing. You get it by the word. When you read the word, that's how you begin to get faith in Christ. Everybody got that? All right. You get faith when you read the word or when you hear the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you hear it or when you read it, that's how you begin to get faith. It doesn't come by feeling. It doesn't come by, I had a dream. I looked up in the cloud. I saw GPJ go preach Jesus. It doesn't work that way. 
The way you go and preach Jesus is by studying the Word. And if you study the Word in due time, you'll determine whether you're able. See, some people have studied the Word, but they still can't preach. So that, that doesn't mean, doesn't mean that, that you're going to be there. All right? So the heart. Change the heart. All right? Now let's deal with behavior. How do, how do I change my behavior? i got to repent. I used to be a liar. I'm going to stop lying. That guy in Congress that lied about he's a Jew, you better come on out and say what you is. Now, I don't, in fact, he don't even know what his name is. It's questionable whether he's even given, he's given the right name. All right? So you've got to repent and be honest. Tell the truth. When you get stopped by the policeman for speeding, don't say you were going 30 miles an hour in a, in a, in a 40 mile zone. You know you were going 50. Tell the truth, okay? I believe, I believe Jesus said that all liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He didn't say white lies, little lies, small lies. He said all liars, all right? <clears throat> so you got to change your behavior. And repentance, now, you change your behavior, you repent, or do you become Christ-like in your lifestyle? Now, becoming Christ-like is a lifetime function. You can't become a Christ-like overnight. You know, I, 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 was, I, was, I was stupid last night, but now I'm the most intelligent thing in the world. That doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to grow. Peter said, let us grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. All right. So to change my behavior, I've got to become Christ-like. And finally, to change my relationship, I've got to be baptized. Baptism does what? It remits my sin. It removes the guilt of sin. And the Lord adds me to the church. Just drop back to Acts chapter 2. If you have your Bibles right quick in Acts chapter 2. In verse 47 the Bible says, Praising God, having favor with all the people. The Lord, right? Added. Added. You don't join church. Nobody in the Bible ever joined church. Now, let, me, let me help you see it better. Let me help you see it better. All of you that have had a baby by birth, your baby didn't join your family. Your baby was an addition to your family. Now, if your baby joined your family, that means your baby was already alive and you adopted the baby. You can't join church. Not the, the Lord's church. Now, you can join some churches, but not the Lord's church. The Lord adds you to the church when you are converted. I, 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 want our, I want our virtual audience to understand this. The Lord is the only one who can put you in. The Lord is the only one that can put you out. I'm talking about excommunicating somebody. Now, there, there, there's a way to discipline. Some members just don't act right. That's why you have leadership. You got to set people down and straighten them out or you get, get them corrected because they'll just run wild if you don't tell them what they got to do. There are a lot of things that people don't like in, in, in the church of Christ. They don't like it, but you still got to put up with it. The Lord don't like you either. But he still puts up with you. There's a whole lot of stuff we all do that the Lord can't stand, but he puts up with, he lets your heart keep beating. You got enough nerve to say you're upset with the body of Christ. No, but that one is just some folk in the church with all of us are devils. You're going to be a miserable person. We all got some issues. We all got some idiosyncrasies. We all got some funny business going on. All right? All right, so the relationship, baptism, so that changed the change the behavior, and change the religion. All right, now let's go on cruise control. There are ten acts in the book of Acts, right quick. And they did three things. They had faith, repentance, and baptism. That's how you convert it. Nowhere do you read of somebody saying accepting Jesus as your personal Savior. 
Nowhere do you read of saying that wherever you are, you can just accept Jesus and grace will come into your heart. But the Lord never taught that. Nowhere. Accept him as your personal savior. Now you need to give your life to him personally. But you, you accept Jesus. Jesus gave you the terms for you to accept him. Change the heart. That's your belief system. Change your behavior. Change your relationship. That's it. All right, now I'm going to give you 10 shots. Right quick. Yeah, everybody in a hurry? Acts chapter 2 and verse number 37. Right quick. In the 37th verse, the Bible says, Now the apostles standing up with Peter, they had preached the first gospel sermon. And really, so, so you got this real clear. The key to the word is this. It is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If Jesus had not risen from the grave, forget everything we're doing. All right? So we need to understand the core of the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Now, everything else that Jesus taught is a part of the gospel. All right? The, the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall be you know, All of those are part of the gospel, but the core of the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. All of that makes up the gospel, but understand what the core is. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. That's why we commune. We commune to remember his death, his sacrifice, his burial, and his resurrection. Why does it say on the front of that table, do this in remembrance of me? That's on the front of that table, right? The reason why it's on the front of that table is because it's in the Bible. Do this in remembrance of me. That's why you do it. That's the core. All right? That sets up what happened on Pentecost. Now look at verse at, at, at uh, chapter, chapter 2. All right? The Pentecostians. In, a in Acts chapter 2, you have people that on the day of Pentecost, they are in Jerusalem. The Lord picked this day to begin the church, to start its earthly operation. Notice what I said now. The church in AD 33 in Jerusalem started its earthly operation. But the church was already existing in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. God had it already in his mind. He just started it operating on the earth in Jerusalem, God's city, on the day of Pentecost. What is Pentecost? Cost means day. Penny means 50. 50 days after the Sabbath, that's when they worshiped. What is that? That's a Sunday. That's the first day of the week. Anytime you take 50 days after Saturday, you will end up on a Sunday. Lord have mercy. Pentecost is the first day of the week. Now what happened on the first day of the week? They communed on the first day of the week. They gave on the first day of the week. They sang on the first day of the week. They prayed on the first day of the week. They preached on the first day of the week. On the first. So on the first day of the week, this is the Lord's day. That's why we call it the Lord's day. That's why John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Because the Lord rose. Now if you worship on Saturday, you're worshiping him being in the grave. Because he was in the grave on Saturday. So why are you worshiping it on Saturday? Well, they did it in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is a good covenant, but the New Testament is a better covenant, the Hebrew writer says. Because under the Old Covenant, I could not be saved. But under the New Covenant, we all, Jew and Gentile, there's neither bond nor free, all are one in Christ Jesus. All right, so let's go back to Acts chapter 2. In verse 37, they were pricked in their heart when they heard this. That means they heard the word. Then when they were pricked, that means they were ready to do something about it. Well, that water, how do you know? Well, let's read what it says. In that same verse, they said, what shall we do? See, anytime you get pricked, you, ask, you should be asking the question, what shall I do? And what did Peter say? Verse 38, Peter said what? Repent and be baptized. Now why would somebody say you don't have to be baptized to be saved? Tell me why! You know, that, that makes me mad almost. How you come up, come up with that? 
Well, I know what I know how, how they come up with it. They say, well, first of all, at water, Peter is not Jesus. Okay, Peter's not Jesus. Let's see what Jesus said. Mark 16 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's what Jesus said. Now everything Peter said, Jesus told him to say it. Why? Because Peter was guided by the Holy Spirit. Everything Peter said, everything Paul said, everything James said, everything John said, everything they said, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. That means Jesus told them what to say. All right? All right, let's hasten on now. Let me, let me, let me give you another one right quick. Let's go to the 8th chapter of Acts. In the 8th chapter of Acts, y'all got your Bibles? See, I, I made it real easy. That way you won't have to go from book to book or y'all don't know the books of the Bible. That way you just stay in one book. Okay, all you got to do is be able to count. All right? In the 8th chapter of Acts, in verse number 1, notice something in verse number 1. And Saul, have y'all ever heard of Saul? No, we've all heard of Saul, right? Saul was consenting unto the death. The death of Stephen. Now, first of all, let me summarize chapter 3 quickly. Stephen was one of the Christians, the new Christians, one of those guys that was preaching the word and giving history of how it came about that Jesus was crucified. And then while Stephen was be preaching the truth, they got ready to stone him to death for telling the truth. And while they were stoning him to death, he looked into heaven, and this is the only time you read of Jesus standing up. You're stoning my man, and you're going to pay a price for that. All right. But Stephen was stoned, and Saul was there holding Stephen's clothes while they stoned him to death. Saul. Y'all remember that now? Saul, Saul, Saul. See, some bad dudes can become some good guys. Saul was holding his clothes while they stone Stephen to death. And then in the meantime, Saul then goes down and he's consenting to the death of Christians. Notice in verse number one, and that time there was a great persecution against the church. Now you notice that definite article, the. It didn't say a church. It said the church. Now, Atwater, why didn't it say church of Christ? It didn't have to. You know why? Because the church of Christ was the only one that was there. There was no other church at this point. 600 years later, Catholicism got started. Where did it get started? It got started out of the church of Christ. In Rome. Not Jerusalem. And out of Catholicism came Baptist, Wesleyan, Methodist, Episcopalians, all of those came out of Catholicism and they were called denominations. Just being real. I, you know, see, all you got to do is just read history. Now, we, we got a governor down in Florida who wants to get rid of history. I'm waiting on him to say, let's, 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 let's get rid of the Bible. He hasn't said that yet, but he's saying get rid of a whole lot of other books. But I'm, I'm waiting on him to say get rid of the Bible. All right, now, Paul, now watch this. I'm going to show you something. Sometimes the Lord allows trouble in the church. In my more mature ministerial period, I don't get all bent out of shape when there's trouble in the church. Because sometimes the Lord allows trouble to get somebody to get up and do something. Amen? Sometimes you need trouble in your life to make you stop doing what you have been doing. Sometimes you need to get a bill you can't pay and the man keep bothering you and so forth and they're going to throw you in jail and all this kind of stuff to get you to get up and get you a job. See, sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need some little stimulated encouragement in your life to save your money. Isn't that right, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get a pile of cash, don't be running around and paying all your bills when you get a pile of cash. Put that money aside and live like you've been living and build up. See, when you, when you get a blessing, don't waste the blessing. Learn from the patriarch Joseph. I don't, I don't have time to work on that now, but uh, you know, I just want to help you. See, a lot of times what happens, we get a blessing and we mess up the blessing. All right? Now, let's, let's take a look at Saul right quick here. 
great persecution against the church. Which, which church was it? The one that was at Jerusalem. That's, that's, that's where it was, okay? And what? They were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea, Samaria, except the apostles. What, what, what did the Lord do? He forced the church to be scattered abroad by Saul. Because Saul was throwing them in prison and killing Christians. They were scattered abroad. But he kept the apostles in Jerusalem. Amen. You know, have you heard that phrase, in the fullness of time? The Lord moves in the fullness of time. He wasn't ready for Gentiles yet. In the fullness of time. So he kept the apostles in Jerusalem to work on those Jews. And you know, Jews today still don't believe that the Messiah has come. They're still waiting on the Messiah to come. They're still living in the Torah. The Torah was good, but the New Testament is better. All right? Now, let, let, let me finish chapter 8 now. So what happened is Saul caused the people to move throughout Samaria. So now we have the Samaritans. When they get over into Samaria, people are clamoring. Look at verse number 5. Philip went down to the city of what? Samaria and did what? He preached Christ. See, when you get in the pulpit, you ain't got nothing else to do but preach Christ. Preach Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things. They heard what he said. You know what I said, you know. How do you build up faith? You got to hear truth. All right? All right, now to, to save some time now. That's how they got their faith. Look at verse number nine. Now, there's always somebody that's crooked that will mess up your thinking. All right, in the ninth chapter of Acts, and I'm sorry, 8th chapter, verse 9, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before in the same city used what? Sorcery, bewitch. You, ever get, you, got, you, know, you know, every now and then you go by, you see a little house with a little, little funny looking house that says uh, palm reading. Uh, we, we'll read your sign for you. You know, we'll read the stars for you. Let you know what your future is. Okay. And you go in there and get all discombobulated and all messed up, coming out believing that the stars are telling you what there's only one star, and that is Jesus Christ himself. All right? But Simon was messing with the people. Now, now Simon was giving out that himself, that he was some great one. Now, what Simon was, he was in the money-making business. See, you can say some things, and people will believe anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could stand outside right now and just look up in the sky like this here. Guarantee eventually somebody's going to come by. Brother Iwata, what you looking up at? Oh, I see a blessing in the sky. Yeah, yeah, I, I see something great. It's coming, it's coming. You know, and, and can, can't you see what I see? Let, just look at that thing. You look at it long enough, we'll be there together. I, I tell you what now, you give me $100 and I'll help you to see it better. So I pull out a set of glasses out of my pocket, you know, say, here, you put these glasses on, you'll be able to see it a little better after you give me the $100, you know. You know, some people will believe anything. I'm making this a little bit of comical, but sometimes we get caught up because we don't know the truth. When you don't know the truth, you believe those things that sound like truth. All right? So in the ninth chapter, he, he bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he was somebody great. All right? Just to save some time now in verse number 12. But when they believed Philip preaching, all right? Everybody got that? When they believed Philip preaching, Things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, what? They were what? Baptized both men and women. So now I'm showing you that Samaritans, Samaritans. Now that's a whole nother story on Samaritans. Samaritans were people that couldn't stand Jews. They hated Jews. That's, a, that's some historic history to that. I don't have time to deal with that. But the, the key point is the Samaritans, they heard the preaching, they heard the word of Philip, that they built faith. They began to change their attitude because they, you don't get baptized unless you're changing your attitude. When repentance takes place, then they were baptized. All right? Let's look at verse number 13. Let me give you somebody else. How about the crooked guy himself? See, every now and then, see, the person that brings on the devil men, you may, they, they may turn out to be the best person there is. Don't ever discount anybody. All right, in verse number 13, the Bible says, then, that, that's an adverb of time. Simon saw all these people getting baptized. The Bible says, then Simon himself believed also. He believed Philip. He continued with Philip and wondered 
beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now here's the problem with here's the problem with Simon. He believed, and Simon was even baptized. But Simon wasn't truly converted. He thought that what he could do is become a Christian and still make his money doing his thing. Lord have mercy. And you pay a price when you try to use Christianity with you, but you have an ulterior motive. See, some people come to church because they have an ulterior motive. Lord have mercy. Well, Ann said, Lord, I don't need to say it then. Okay. All right, now, let, let, let's go a little further. Now, let's go to the eighth chapter of Acts. Let me give you number three. In, 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 uh, uh, I'm sorry, let's, let's go to the eighth chapter. I'm, I'm going to give you a case number four in verse 35. Philip. Now let's bring Philip back to the table. Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him what? Jesus. Now this is the eunuch. Now let me tell you a little bit about the eunuch. I, I preached on him last Sunday. The eunuch is an Ethiopian coming out of Africa. He had heard that there is a monotheistic God up in Jerusalem. So he decided to go to Jerusalem to worship. And when he got to Jerusalem, he worshiped on his way home. He was reading from the book of Isaiah. But he didn't understand what he was reading. See, you cannot understand the Bible unless somebody teaches you how to understand the Bible. You cannot understand. You know why you go to school to learn mathematics? Because you cannot learn mathematics. On your side. You know why? You know why Sister Witherspoon go, go, went to law school? You know why Sister Atwater's going to law school? Because the, the, you know, you really can't learn how to interpret the law unless somebody else of experience teaches you how to interpret the law. You might read the law, but to interpret the law and to apply the law, you got to be taught. In order to apply math, you've got to be taught. Understand the Bible, you've got to be taught. That's why we have classes to teach you how to apply the Scripture and be taught so you can teach your children, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, your neighbors, and so forth as you come in contact with people. Amen? Now, I've been at it long enough. I can teach you some things. That doesn't mean I can teach you everything. If I can't answer a question, I have enough sense to go somewhere where I can get an answer. And the answer will be from the word of God. All right? Not only that, in the case of Simon, in the case of the eunuch, look at verse number 35. Philip opened his mouth, began at the same scripture. So now the eunuch was reading in Isaiah, but he didn't know what he was reading. And Philip explained it to him. All right? To save some time. Ah. In verse 36, as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. Now watch this here. Now verse 35 says he preached Jesus. And now all of a sudden they're talking about water. So you can't preach Jesus without talking about water. <laughs> Everybody got that? that? There's a reason why you can't preach Jesus without talking about water because if you go back to Genesis chapter 1 and verses 1 and 2, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. You know what's happening in our world right now? There's a shortage of water. We got plenty of water, but there's shortages of water in certain areas. You know how, you, how it is if your water ever gets shut off at home? You know, some people say, well, I don't like drinking water. You go a few days without some water, you're going to look for some water. And you're not going to look for Pepsi-Cola either. All right? Water is important in the Lord's business. All right? All right, in verse 37, Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. He said, and what, what, what did the eunuch say? I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. See, that, that's why I ask, when, when the person is getting baptized in the church, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? God I got I to gotta know that. Now, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you're not going to be baptized. Not here. Okay, all right. It's a waste of your time, waste of my time, church time, the Lord's time, if you don't believe in Jesus. All right, then he went, goes on to say, and he, so he commanded the chariot to stop. So he's riding in a chariot. Philip is in the chariot, teaching him a Bible class in the chariot. And they went both down where? Into the water. That tells me something else. Sprinkling won't fly. 
All right? You see, just take the Bible for what it says. You don't sprinkle people. Why, do I, why should they be buried? Because Christ was buried. Christ was buried in his grave. We we're buried in a watery grave. Christ was resurrected a new life as the spiritual Christ. We are resurrected as new creatures in Christ. You see the, you see the parallelism? All right, okay, that, that, that saves some time on that. So anyway, the eunuch was baptized. Let me go, let's go hasten on. Let's go on now. Let's deal with Saul. Now, Saul was messing with the church. Didn't I tell you sometimes a devilish person can become a great person? All right, in the ninth chapter of Acts, look at verse number 17. Before I get to verse 17, quickly, 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 as time is getting away from me. Saul is on his way to Damascus to round up some more Christians and bring them back and put them in jail and kill them. You know what Jesus did spiritually? Jesus met him on the road with an angel and knocked him off his horse. See, sometimes the Lord will give you a big blow. You got the truth. It's right there at you, but you, you can't absorb it until you get hit. Sometimes somebody has to die for some of us to really understand the importance of the church. Sometimes the Lord has to get serious with us, break us down with sickness or some kind of incident in our lives to get us to realize that he has the final answer. There are people who say, well, I don't believe in Jesus. There will come a time where you wish you had believed in Jesus. All right, amen, that water. Okay, now, look at verse 17. Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, he said, what did Ananias say? Did he say, Reverend Saul? You ever wonder why, we, why I'm not called Reverend appropriately? Because it's not scriptural for me to be called Reverend. I'm going to ask you this question. Have you ever heard of anywhere in the scripture where Paul was called Reverend Paul? How about Reverend Timothy? How about Reverend Gaius? Reverend James? Reverend John? How about Reverend Jesus? Don't you think Jesus ought to be called Reverend? Preach the greatest sermon in Matthew 6, 5, 6, and 7. Reverend, that doesn't even sound right. Reverend Jesus. But holy and reverend is God the Father's name. God is the reverend one that we must reverence and give him the, 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 his, due, his due recognition. Okay? All right, but anyway, back to Saul. Back to Saul now. Saul ends up Ananias because his brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that you might receive sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. In verse 18, he was baptized. And this, his baptism is so important that it's restated again in Acts 22. I don't have time to work with that. It's restated again as Paul himself explained how that he heard the word and how that he changed his life. And instead of killing Christians, he himself died as a Christian. See how a devil can become a saint with the, with the help of the word. Okay. That's the case of Saul. All right, let's hasten on. Now, in the 10th chapter of Acts, there's a guy, verse number one, there's a guy named uh, uh, Cornelius. He's a Gentile. He's a Gentile. Now, let, let, let me share with you. Do you know that there are great people outside the church? Yeah, they're, they're great people. There are some people outside the church that live better than people in the church. Look, look, look here what, what Cornelius did. Look at verse two. A devout man. He feared God. All of his household feared God. Gave alms to the people. Prayed to God always. But he still wasn't a saved man. See, that's because you do good stuff doesn't make you a saved person. What makes you a saved person? Obedience. See, you got to be obedient. Just because I walk by Fifth Third Bank and bow, oh, Fifth Third, oh, Fifth Third, amen to you, Fifth Third Bank. Doesn't mean I'm entitled to get some money out of the Third Bank. I've got to obey the rules of Fifth Third Bank. 
Now, a crook, a, 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 a sinful person who has put money in the bank at fifth third can get money out of the bank at fifth third. A righteous person who hasn't put nothing in there, you can't get anything out of fifth third just because you say, well, I'm good. I'm nice. I walk by. Y'all got a, y'all got a pretty sign. I love, I love it. You can't walk by McDonald's. Oh, I like those arches, those beautiful arches, and just expect them to come outside and give you a Big Mac. No, you got you to gotta follow the rules. What's the rules? Walk inside. Place your order on the kiosk. <laughs> on the kiosk. I pull up your app. All right, right? Y'all, 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 my, my, my son, he, he, he's an app man. <laughs> Your app, 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 application, app, app. Everybody buy with an app. No, you, me, I'm still a cash man. Yeah, cash. Give me my burger. Yeah, you got to follow the rules. Okay, all righty. Cornelius, 10th chapter of Acts. All right, let's save some time. Down in verse number 44. Okay, now y- y'all should be writing these down because I'm, I'm giving you a, a, a speedy lesson. While Peter yet spake these words... The Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. Now, this is Cornelius and all of his whole household. You can read the rest of it in your own leisure time. Okay. They believed, verse 45, they believed. And, uh, of course, in verse 47, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Okay. So they were baptized. So they heard the word. They changed their belief system, and they were baptized and added to the church. All right? Let's, let's, go, let's, let's go quick to the chapter 16. Y'all, got, y'all still got your Bible now? You got time? If you don't have time, we're going to take time, okay? So, so don't, don't worry about that now. I'm, I'm not going to let you get away without this here. In the 16th chapter of Acts, and verse number 13, there is a lady named Lydia, and she was worshiping on the Sabbath day. All right? Look, look at verse 13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where a prayer was being made, and we sat down and spake unto the women which resort. So they were worshiping on. So we got people today that worship on Saturday. Okay? Now this, this is a good biblical example to teach those people. They were worshiping. She was worshiping on Saturday. Okay? But then something happened. Uh, we find uh, in verse number... Uh, 14, a certain woman named Lydia, seller of purple, and uh, notice here, she heard us, she heard the preaching of the word. The heart, whose heart the Lord opened. See, when you repent, the Lord opens your heart to receive the truth. The reason why anybody doesn't receive the truth is because they have closed their heart. And when you close your heart, the Lord can't do anything for you. Now, what's the heart? It's your mind. Well, I, well, you know, some people say, I made up my mind. You know, my mama was in my grandmama, my grandmama. Your grandmama and great-grandmama would have done better had somebody taught them. There were some gospel butchers that taught them false doctrine, and that's what they believed. Amen. Let me, let me, let me give you a statistic. You do you know why a lot of Afro-Americans are Baptists? It had nothing to do with them reading themselves into the Baptist church. It has to do with slavery. Whatever the master did, that's what they did. They couldn't go into the building with the master's family and worship. They would sit up outside under a tree and copy and do the same thing that they're doing inside the building. Lord have mercy. See, slavery is still in, the the, the effects of slavery is still in the church today. And we're suffering from it. There are good people, there are good black people, there are good white people, there are great people. But we got to be righteous people. Amen? All right, now, Lydia is is, is worshiping on Saturday. Now look at verse number 15, no, verse 14. Uh, She heard the word, the Lord opened her heart as Paul is speaking. Now Paul is now not Saul. In fact, when you got a bad name, the Lord will give you a new name. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, see, I I was a bad guy, so now I'm just a Christian. 
Yeah, you got a new name. Couldn't you get the name Christian? That's a new name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And she, now watch this now. And when she was baptized, verse 15, and her household besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. So in other words, she left her worship, was baptized, became a Christian in the church of Christ, and now she's inviting them over to her house. All right? Y'all like that one? Well, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to take it. All right? Now, let's, 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 let's hang in the 16th chapter for just a moment. Now, look at verse number 27. In the 16th chapter, in verse number 27. Well, let's go to verse 25. Paul and Silas now, they are singing praises in jail. They're in jail because they've been good men and teaching the truth. See, so a lot of times you go to jail for being good. There are a lot of people right now in jail that ought not to be in jail. They're in jail because they can't play bail or whatever, but they're in jail. So they're, they're good people in jail. Paul and Silas, they were in jail. And suddenly there was a great earthquake and so forth, and the jail was opened up. See, the Lord always, when you want the truth, the Lord will make a way for you to hear the truth. And the Lord opened up the jail and all the prisons, but then Paul said, all right, now, listen, prisoners, we're not going to leave here. Everybody's going to stay here. We're going to stay right here. The jailer, who's supposed to have been watching all the prisoners, he was over there asleep. He wakes up, getting ready to kill himself, because he assumed that with the, with, the, with the doors all open, everybody was gone. And then Paul said, hold it, hold it, hold it. We all here. We all here. I'm a righteous man. You got me here. In fact, let me talk to you. And so as we look at this particular text, the Philippian jail, in verse number 30, 16 and verse number 30. He brought them out to Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This is the jailer says. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And then as we look a little bit further, and he took them that same hour of the night and washed their stripes, and what? And was what? Baptized. So that, that, that's, 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 that's number eight, okay? All right, let me hasten on now. Let's go to the 18th chapter of Acts. In the 18th chapter of Acts, in verse number 1. After these things, Paul goes into Antioch, and he comes to Corinth. These are the Corinthians. Say sometime in verse number 5, Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia. Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. Now here's Paul, a Jew, telling Jews that Jesus is the Christ and the Messiah. Okay. Now, let, 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 me, let, me, let me wrap this up da, down in, in verse number 8. And Christmas, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians did what? Hearing, believed, and they were baptized. So they, they came on over to the church that Paul was in. All right? Now, let me give you one last one. I'm going to give you one last one, okay? This, this will be 10. In the, ninth, in the uh, 18th chapter of Acts, go to the end of the 18th chapter of Acts. You all remember Billy Graham? Yeah, you might remember Billy Graham? You old folk? Okay, you old folk. Billy Graham used to preach to thousands of people in football stadiums and what have you. And when he get to the end, of, he, he'd preach great messages, about a, great me a, a message that would, would make, you, make you just melt. Ooh, I feel so spiritual. But when he gets to the end, he will say this. I can see it and hear it now. No matter where you are, if you're in a bar, if you're in your living room, put your hand on the TV set, and you can be saved. <laughs> After all of that great message, he would say just wherever you are, you can be saved. Now, I give you that example. We got them now, T.D. Jakes. You know, we, we got them, you know, we got great TV evangelists, nice edifices and auditoriums and great orators. But they don't tell the truth. They tell, let me put it this way, they tell enough truth. See, if you mention the word love, most people will accept that as truth. See, when you just say, just love your fellow man, 
They, I haven't heard anybody say, love your enemy. Jesus said, love your enemy. Now, I can, I can love somebody to love me. You give me a gift, oh, I can love you to death. Oh, every time you give me some black wall and ice cream, I love you. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. You know, we can love anybody that, that's good to us. Clyde, bring me in them cashews. Lord, have mercy. I just love Clyde to death. Let him stop bringing them cashews. Then we, then, we, then we got a problem. Then we got a problem. So you can love people that love you. But the real test of Christianity is can you love somebody that does not love you? That's Christianity. All right, so in the 18th chapter of Acts, yeah, in verse 24, now watch this. A certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures. See, this, this is biblical. See, you, you know, we got a lot of people on the TV guys that are eloquent in scriptures, mighty, good voice and everything, right? But they teach false doctrine. See, this guy right here in the Bible was teaching John's baptism. John's baptism won't work. All right, now let, let, let's wrap it up. In verse 28, for he mightily convinced the Jews and, the, and publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. So he was talking about Jesus and so forth, but he was preaching John's baptism. Now, let's go to the 19th as we wrap this thing up. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through. Now, Paul comes through and he, and he asked the people, have you received the Holy Ghost? Since you believe in, they said, well, we don't know so much thing. Is, is there such thing as the Holy Ghost? And he said unto them, then unto what were you baptized? And what did they say? In verse number three, unto John's baptism. See, just because you've been baptized does not mean that you've been baptized righteously. All right? All right, so th th then what took place? In verse number four, then, Paul, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of what? repentance alright but then he goes on to say that they should be believe on him that should come after him that comes after John that is on Christ Jesus when they heard this what they were rebaptized. see in other words you got to understand something if your teaching is wrong your baptism is wrong you can't go to Wendy's and get a Big Mac amen alright okay everybody got it alright in Ephesians chapter 19 and verse number 1. So there might be somebody now. Brother, well, I want to get my life together. You come by changing your heart, by changing your behavior, and changing your relationship. As we stand right now with the song of invitation, won't you come? When you come, we'll tell you what you got to do. Let us stand. Somebody's knocking at your door And go Sinner, tell me why don't you answer Somebody's knocking at your door Not like Jesus Somebody 